A lot of us are aware of the state of education around us. A lot of us are aware, what, what most of us might not know is there are people thinking up new ways to address this issue. Our next speaker is one such person. He is an author, he's an educator, and he's one who looks to inspire youth and to grow youth. So without much ado, I'll, let, I'll introduce you to Mr. Tommy Davis, who will tell you a bit more about education and the way forward. Thank you. Holy Christ. Am I really here? Okay. Um, my talk's very simple. Okay. What I want us to do is to let the children play. Skills. We can't hear them. What did you How say? Are you all? That's a primary school here in Lagos. And if we believe what the economists and others are saying, only five of those kids are ever going to make it to get a college degree. In fact, Half of them will be parents before they're 25. Seven of them only, max, only seven of them will ever be able to earn more than $20,000 a year in their lifetime. And the one that really, really worries me, especially given my age, is the fact that if that whole team is lucky, one, of them will see their 60th birthday. That school is not unique. In fact, if anything, they're the poster children of the African underdevelopment today. That's the African challenge. We could talk about child mortality. We could talk about life expectancy. We could talk about GDP per head. I could go on about statistics, but I'm not going to bother you with that. The key thing is this. We can't compete in a world that is accelerating itself in development using information and communication technologies. That's the real challenge. And when you look at that, sorry about that, you find that the crux of the matter is the people we are growing. That is you, me, and everybody in here. How do we grow? We grow through education. And the challenge with education in Africa is very simple. The history of education is steeped in our colonial past. And the education systems then, rightfully so, were designed to create individuals that will be support staff to the colonial masters. The world's moved on. What hasn't changed, unfortunately, we've tweaked it right, left, a little to the right, and so on. But our educational system has not fundamentally changed from when it was left by our colonial masters. So we're not creating the kind of people we need to be decision makers or nation builders. Learning by rote, the teacher is the fountain of all knowledge. These are challenges that we face even till today. Now, the thing is, I am not naive enough to believe we can solve all of Africa's problem immediately. But I am optimistic enough to actually believe that we can start to design the solutions not just for the ones we see, but even the ones we don't see, by creating people who are problem solvers, creative thinkers for tomorrow. Question is, skills, how do we do that? Well, play. By playing, we learn. Play is actually defined as a psychological activity that in and of itself is all it is. Absolutely no purpose 
other than the activity itself. However, that is why a lot of people say, ah, isn't it frivolous, isn't it trivial? But get this, that is the paradoxical point. The power of play in education lies exactly in its triviality. Because the child that is playing does not know he is learning. Through play, a child learns about himself. Through play, a child learns about people, learns about his environment, learns about the world around him. In playing, a child learns how to get along with others. A child even learns the power of leadership. We have seen this and skills. What we've decided to do is guess what? Rather than talk about it, let's just do it. So that same school, remember? Only one's going to get to 60 years old. We decided to create a playroom. And what we are doing, ladies and gentlemen, is we're letting the children play. Thank you very much.